chapter 3, lesson 1, is about fractions and division. So remember, any division problem can be expressed as a fraction or a mixed number. So which means the, the dividend becomes the numerator and the divisor becomes the denominator. Okay, so also when we are uh, using the whole number of a mixed number, that would be the quotient when you divide. And the remainder becomes the numerator of the fraction of the mixed number and the denominator would be the divisor. Okay, so which means uh, we also, finally, we have to remember that fractions can, has to be in reduced or simplest form. So even if the kids are not asked to put it in simplest or reduced form, we have to remember that they have to do that. So to discuss all of those words, they, we will be looking at page 57 and 59. Okay, so starting with page 57, it says divide and express the fraction in simplest form. Okay, so this is 2a. Okay, so looking at page 57, the instruction says divide and express the fraction in simplest form. So if we look at this, this is 8 over 14. Okay, so which means this can be both divided by 2. So when we divide by 2, this will be 4 over 7. So divide and divide by 2. Okay, similarly, if we look at this, this is 14 divided by 6, written as a fraction. So if we divide, these both can be divided by 2, that's 7 over 3. So which means this right here will be divided by 2 and divided by 2. Okay, gives us 7 over 3. Okay, but here it says write in mixed number. So that means this, when we divide, 7 divided by 3 is 2. Multiply 6, subtract 1. The remainder will be the numerator of the fraction. So that means this will be 2 and 1 over 3. So again, the, at the beginning, I said that any division problem can be expressed as a fraction. And I said that if the number involves a mixed number, the quotient is the whole number, the remainder would be the numerator, and the divisor will be the denominator. Okay, now... Proceeding to page 59, it says, express each fraction as a decimal. Correct your answer to one decimal place. Okay, so this one, I will show computationally. But in this section, there's also an introduction of the use of a calculator. So I will do the computational version and I'll show how to check if we did it correctly. And then this one right here, we will do with a calculator completely. So first we will divide. Okay, so when we divide, this is one divided by six. So this is zero. Okay, then we'll add a zero. Then we divide, that would be one. Okay, this will be 6, we subtract, that will be 4. Okay, so if it says correct to one decimal place, we need another digit here so that we can underline the 1 to see if how to round it off. So I'm going to add another 0. And when I divide that, that will be 6. Okay, then that means that will be 36. So I could stop here because all I need is to correct 
to one decimal place. So if I want correct to one decimal place, I underline. And then I look at the number after, since it's bigger than 5, then that means that will go up. So that means this is 0 0.2. So again, when we check in our calc queue, we should get the same value. So checking our answer to for A, letter A, we had 1 divided by 6. Then press equal to. It's a fraction. We need to put it as a decimal. So there's this button that says SD. We gotta press that. So when we press, we see that it's 0 0.016666. But since it only wants one decimal place, we just need the one and the six, which means that's what we got when we calculated earlier on. So if we look at for B, letter B, where the problem says 7 divided by 12 and correct to two decimal places, we take 7 divided by 12 equals. Again, it shows it as a fraction. We press the SD and we get 5.833. So if we want correct to, three, uh, to two decimal place, then that means we need the 0.58 and the 3. And then we round off. So taking our answer from our calculator, this would be 0 0.583. Since we want it correct to two decimal places, we underline the second decimal. Since that number is lesser than 5, then that means this will be 0 0.58. So again, any fraction can be written as decimal and vice versa. So any division can be written as a fraction as well. That concludes lesson one of chapter three. See you in the next lesson.